So the Nike GPS, I think, is my new favorite sneaker. It's the most boot-like sneaker I've ever worn or reviewed, and it claims to be resolable. It says it's durable, supportive, because it was designed to be a tool for you, and it was designed by Tom Sachs, who pulls a lot of inspiration and functionality from NASA. And so the concept itself really intrigued me, and I've been wearing a couple pairs of these over the last month or so, and I really like them. So we're gonna cut these in half, run them through the test to see if it's just me falling for a little bit of hype for something that's really targeted specifically for someone that likes the functionality of footwear, or if it is actually a really high quality sneaker that you can rebuild, resole, and has it actually lives up to the claims of the general purpose shoe. So now let's go over the history of the GPS and Nike Craft and Tom Sachs, just a quick rundown of what this means to give you some context. So Tom is a contemporary artist whose aesthetic is really DIY and really heavy in, heavily influenced by like NASA and the, the, a lot of those things that are really function first that inform the aesthetic and kind of create its own unique aesthetic. And it all started in 2012 when he did his first collaboration, the Mars Yard, one of my personal grails, except for like, they're like $6,000, maybe one day. And then in 2017, the Mars Yard 2.0 came out. It was a little bit upgraded version with a wider release than the original Mars Yard. And then in 2019, the Mars Yard Overshoe was released, which basically was a Mars Yard with a Dyneema bag around the entire shoe which was kind of interesting because people just cut it off to get down to the Mars Yard 2.0 but it is a really unique shoe and so in 2022 the general purpose shoe was released with a full page ad in the New York Times with the big boring thing which is I went to marketing school I got my bachelor's degree in business and marketing so I really appreciate uh, that throwback to the old Volkswagen ad the lemon ad and then since it's released in June the prices have kind of gone up and down and the hype was uh, it seemed like initially people really hated this shoe but once they got it on foot people really started to like it start to appreciate some more of the functionality that leads us up to today where yesterday another release of the general purpose Purpose shoes were released because that's kind of the whole concept of this shoe so speaking of the concept let's go over what this shoe is supposed to be so what does GPS stand for it stands for general purpose shoes and on Nike's website they say the Nike craft general purpose shoe is an understated do everything shoe created to do work with every possible scenario the GPS reminds us that the beauty comes in creating connection with the things we own, stain it, tear it, repair it. And the product listing on Tom Sachs website says, your, your sneakers should not be the most exciting thing about you. They are tools. They do their job so that you can do yours. It took us 10 years to make a sneaker this simple, as simple as it can be, and no simpler. So to me, all of that kind of sounds like what you would hear in the branding of a boot and not a hyped sneaker. And especially the boring, understated sneaker part of that because I, like I mentioned the initial release of these people are like boo this shoe's boring nobody wants it it just looks like a kill shot but then over time when people really started to see the functionality and wear it that's when that boringness became an attribute of the sneaker so now I'll start going through all the details starting with the upper first and start analyzing these materials and see what's what and see if they're really made of high quality materials that are actually gonna last you or if it's once again kind of what I'm afraid of is people have fallen into the hype and just project their own quality on a, on a sneaker. So what is the upper made out of? Well, it's an ultra breathable knit upper and it looks like it's just a common warp knit. So it just has like a lot thicker fibers on certain parts. So it gives it a really chunky and potentially more durable properties because you'd have to wear through those bigger, higher spots to wear down through the, the, the material. And it's similar to the Ultra Boost upper where they're knit on a flat bed and each, so each fiber is not dependent on each other for strength. And so it, it should be a slightly more durable material than some of the other materials out there. But to test the, the flame resistance and to see what type of material it is, we put the flame to it and as you can see it burned pretty easily and it did have like a really plasticky consistency so it's not like it's a cotton material, it seems like it's either a nylon or a polyester fabric and we also wanted to do a quick unraveling test to see if we had a vertical cut in it or and a horizontal cut if we could get it to unravel and as you can see we pulled on it cut it a bunch of different ways and it didn't really unravel so it does seem like it's a fairly durable material and one thing they've done to try to make it more durable is they put this little bit of an uh, almost like a screen printed layer on top of the fabric of TPU thermal polyurethane so the idea would be to give it more durability but the problem is everybody that owns a pair of these it starts cracking within the first few times you wear them like this orange or the yellow pair that i wear a bunch 
it's all it's a, it's already cracked pretty good. It doesn't really bother me because I don't really care as much what these shoes look like, but I don't think it really adds that much durability. I think it's mostly just for the look of the durability with the TPU. And they do have some claims about this upper. They say open enough to breathe, tight enough to ward off a few raindrops. We did a little raindrop test and it really is not that rain resistant. It seems a little like a little bit of a stretch to make that claim. They're not saying they're waterproof. They're not even saying they're water resistant, but it's it's no different than any, any other upper that we've cut apart and water just seeps right through it. So definitely not water resistant in any way, but it is a really cool looking fabric and it has a unique texture and it probably is slightly more durable than a lot of the other knit uppers that we've seen because of how chunky the fabric actually is. The other material they use on this upper is a suede leather. At least they say it's a suede. So let's double check to see if it actually is real leather because it's got, we it's, you have it around the, the toe bumper here. You have it all the way wrapped around the heel, the, like this kind of external counter cover and the lace stays all a suede leather. So we burned it to see if it was actually leather leather because Nike's really good at faking leather and it is real leather because it smelled like flesh and we didn't see any fizzling or bubbling so it seems like it's a fairly natural leather and we also cut a little section off to see where it lies on that cross section to see if it actually is suede and there is no evidence of any grain in there so I believe it's a true suede which is the the worst quality of leather in the cross section but for a sneaker suede is fine it's just not as durable as anything that has that grain pattern in it and so it seems like the really heavy wear portions at least from where i've been wearing them are covered with suede so it gives you that little bit of the breathability and a little a little durability from the uh, this upper knit and the thickness of the suede is 1.5 millimeters thick so a fairly thick suede at that so it seems like it's about as durable as we would expect from a sneaker you know it's, it's i don't think it's anything above and beyond what we've seen from nike but the materials are quality and they're real leather and they're used in a smart way so it's nowhere near boot durability obviously but it is the upper itself seems like it's going to be a durable sneaker but then if we start moving to the inside of the shoe you can see that there's a little bit of an ankle pad that locks in your heel that I really like because I get a lot of heel slip in these if I don't tie them really tight. And I, I, with these straps, it's just such a convenient shoe to be able to just pop on. And so with that little bit of a ridge there does help prevent the heel slip because I, I've seen a couple other people's reviews where they say they get a lot, of, a lot of heel slip too. So without that, I think these would be a very difficult shoe to wear. But the material on the inside is kind of like this, almost like a fake suede. It, they call it a microfiber lining. And it, I think it probably has some of the attributes of a suede where it's gonna be a little bit more durable than just a typical lining on the inside, but it's still not gonna be as durable, in my opinion, as suede. I do like the look of it. Some people complain about how the collar gets all ripply and kind of wavy, but I think it, I think it kind of adds a unique functional texture to it. It looks like your shoes have been worn. And then near the vamp of the shoe, there's a different lining material. And I thought maybe this was what was going to give you a little bit of water resistance, but we dropped some water on that and it just soaked through as well. So really the upper has is really no water resistance at all, unless it happens to land on the TPU or the leather. And then if we start looking at some of the other details on the shoe, like the tongue itself is a really interesting, like three dimensional perforated like breathable tongue you can you can see the light through it pretty easily and the, the inside layer is a piece of foam that has holes cut out of it so you get the squishiness of the tongue with the breathability of this open like almost like jersey material and the pull tabs are a really nice feature because i hate tying shoes just like i said and so these big chunky pull tabs are quite nice but my fear was that they weren't going to be sewed on sewn on well enough to actually use and so we did a quick pull test to see how many pounds it took to actually rip these off. And it took an ungodly amount of pressure to pull them off. And it actually pulled the, the shoe through the screws before they even pulled them off. And that's because if you look closely, we cut this apart, you can see that they're actually sewn on really well, which was surprising for Nike because half the time you see things sewn on Nike, it's just a single strip to give you the look of durability, the look of whatever they're trying to show. But this has that big cross stitch in it and it's box stitched around. So the, the pull tabs in and of themselves are really impressive from Nike, which is like a kind of a silly statement, right? But if you're gonna actually use the pull tabs, you need them to be strong. Another thing I really like is the flat laces. I'd be willing to bet these are stronger than regular laces because it's a flat, like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's almost like a tie down strap. It's kind of the same way that those are those are weaved. And it seems like they tie a lot better and they hold the knot a lot better. And we're going to get a piece of testing equipment next year to be able to actually see which laces are the strongest 
to be able to actually rip them apart to see what's what when it comes to laces because people are always so mad that we just waste the laces when I'm like, well, we just, what are we gonna do with one single lace? Well, now we have a reason for them. We're gonna test them, hopefully. And speaking of laces, I like how big these lace holes are. It, it gives you that look of a shoe that was designed to be as simple to put on, as simple to relace as possible. And it just has a very like raw, unfinished look that you would expect from like a NASA shoe. I think is kind of the idea. But the only problem is lace holes this big, you would assume that they have a tendency to like pull through or rip. But if you look really closely, there's a little black layer in between the layers of suede. So we cut a little slit to expose that layer. And as you can see, it's a really thin, but fibrous layer that adds a little bit of structural strength to the lace keepers. And that's why after wearing these a ton, you can see they haven't really stretched out a, a bunch. And then if we start moving to the inside of the shoe, you can see that it's just a really cheap Nike insole. There's really nothing special about this in any way. But underneath is where it's interesting because we've seen this, I think one time before from a Nike shoe, but the lasting material that is usually a solid piece on the inside has a void cut out of it. And so I think the idea behind this is that you get a more real feel of the foam underneath your foot. It's a little bit more responsive, a little bit more soft and squishy. And the way that they manufacture this is just like a regular shoe with a full layer of the lasting material, but it has perforation holes in it. And so once the shoe is made, all they do is just rip that strip out and you've got foam right underneath your foot. So kind of a cool idea, but the only thing I don't really love about it is I feel like I can feel the little bit of extra pressure on my big toe and my pinky toe because it's not fully removed. It's still, your, those toes are still sitting on top of a lasting material where your middle toes and the middle of your foot is not. And that might just be me looking and like feeling something that's not really there, but that's kind of how it feels to me. But the idea is cool. And if you look really, really deeply in there, the foam midsole actually has a few slits cut into it so it can bend and flex a little bit easier because this shoe, because of how sturdy it's built, it's not the most flexible shoe. So they put those relief cuts in there to allow it to flex a little bit more naturally. And speaking of the midsole, this is a EVA foam midsole. We did a little Shore A test. It's 25 Shore A. And one thing I really like about this midsole is that it's contoured to the shape of your foot. Because most of the Nike sneakers we review, they're always at that wedge shape where it feels like your toes are always jamming to the end of the shoe. Well, this one, the heel has a little cup contoured out of it and same with the ball of your foot. So we'll, sh we'll show you when you get it cut in half, but it's actually, it kind of looks like a Birkenstock. And so it gives you that little bit of arch support that for me is what I'm used to feeling inside of a pair of boots. And it gives you that zero drop feel that I hate not having in sneakers with like the ultra boost where you, you're just standing on a wedge all day and your toes are jammed into the end. So the midsole makes it feel a lot more like a boot. And then finally to the outsole, so they, they say it's a three piece molded cup sole. The three pieces they say is the, the durable rubber waffle tread outsole. And it was shocking how long it took me to, to realize what they meant by waffle. I just, I didn't realize it. <laughs> it just looks like a waffle iron. So to see how firm this outsole is, I do a quick Shore A test on it, durometer test, 77 Shore A. So pretty hard rubber outsole. That's up there in like the boot range. Then they have the soft gum rubber midsole, which I believe is this sidewall. So if we do a little Shore A test on that, it comes around the same. They're saying the EVA foam core is part of the outsole. So I, so it sounds like it's really a two-piece outsole with a little bit of confusing verbiage on Nike's part. But I do like the outsole because it, it, it kind of combines a little bit of the rugged lugginess of a boot where you can actually wear this in a lot of different conditions, environments, some light hikes. You don't have to worry as much about like out in the snow because you got a little bit more tread. Uh, but it still isn't quite as chunky as a boot and you can you can pull it off kind of like a sneaker. And then as for the construction, I believe it's just a cemented cupsole construction because there is a strobel stitch on the inside that you can see. But but it's it's confusing because I, I don't know exactly the process they do it in. And if it is a cupsole, I don't understand how the outsole is cemented on. So that's what we're gonna figure out by cutting it in half. So now let's chop it in half. All right, we got it chopped in half, so let's see what's inside. So 
now you can really see what I meant by that contoured insole or that midsole. See how low it is in the heel and how low it is in the toe and then you've got that arch support. So that's why it feels like a boot underfoot. It's interesting because it kind of combines the foam sold like Blundstone style boots combined with the more arch support of the Pacific Northwest boots. So it is a very unique feeling sneaker on foot. And now we can really see that it's not a three piece outsole. It is just truly a two piece where the gum colored goes all the way underneath. So that's the cup sole. And then you have the black outsole glued on. So it's kind of like a two piece outsole. And I think that's probably where you get some of that resole ability is those two layers being separate and distinct. Once you wear that outsole off, you can probably just sand that flat or remove it and glue a new one on. So if this video does well, I'd actually like to really send one of my pairs to Trenton and Heath to see if a, a true real cobbler could resole these for an affordable price and how they do it and what outsole they would use to see if these really are resolable. Because everything that we're, we're seeing from the inside and the outside points to the fact that it is resolvable. And that leads to some of the flaws that people have seen in the shoe where they have a little bit of delamination between those two layers. So it's kind of a give and take where in order to have it resolvable, there's got to be a little bit of a soft bond between those two layers. But that also leads to a little bit of delamination on some people's shoes. So now overall, what do I think of the shoe? I still really love this shoe, even after cutting it apart. I, I think it, the majority of why I love this is the, the luggy outsole, the resole ability, and especially that contoured insole. It feels way more like a boot than any of the sneakers we re we've reviewed previously. And to me, it's about as perfect of a sneaker for what I value and what I look for in footwear, and especially what we are looking for on this channel. It has a lot of those attributes that are always missing in sneakers that we usually see in boots. This shoe has a lot of those. And it's really, really rare to see a mass-produced sneaker that actually puts out quality and durability and repair repairability. They put that first, and then, then the design second and still have it at a really affordable price because it's only $110 re the retail price is. So this is kind of what I was always hoping we'd see in all the other sneakers or all the other Nike videos we've done. It just seems like we're always let down by Nike's quality. This is what Nike could be making with the majority of their sneakers, but they just don't. And it doesn't seem like there's any reason why they can't because for a collaboration, Tom Sachs has to take a little bit of a cut and Nike still has to make money on it, right? Because Nike's all about money. Every business is about making money. So they have the ability to make high quality sneakers at $110. They just don't. But at the same time, I'm really glad that they did actually go out on a limb and create this sneaker with Tom Sachs and make a really high quality sneaker that's seems like it's the perfect sneaker for boot guys. It has all the attributes and all the things that, that boot guys look for, but in a sneaker. And with the whole concept being a general purpose sneaker where it's, they're gonna have tons of releases and to hopefully drive that price down to keep it at that retail price so it's accessible, so it's something that's not just inflated and overblown and just like nobody can actually wear it. It's supposed to be a sneaker for everybody and that seems like they they pulled it off and finally we get to commend nike for a high quality sneaker bravo nike bravo tom Sachs, bravo nike craft because this is the very first nike craft sneaker that we've done so if the rest of the nike crafts are similar to this we might have to do a series on it because i really like this sneaker and then the final question is are they worth the money well if you compare this to the dunks that we just cut apart a couple weeks ago they're, around, they're basically the exact same price, and these are significantly better quality. There's no fake leather. There's more innovation. There's more features. It's not just uh, cheap fake leather and like a very simple outsole charging $105. This has a lot of what I'd hoped was in the dunks. So to me, these are well worth the price, and I'm actually surprised they're not more money than what they already are. So to me, they're worth it. And the problem with this is they just re-released some more of their sneakers, the GPS sneakers yesterday. So hopefully they're not sold out. But if you want a pair of these, I would go buy them now before people really start appreciating these sneakers for what they are or before even people from this video go and buy a bunch and inflate the price. So if you want a pair of these, go get them now. I really like these shoes and I, I think you guys are gonna really like them too. So I want you guys to get these before they get ridiculously priced. So let me know what you guys think and if you have a pair of these, what your experiences are in them because they're not without fault. You know, the TPU kind of falls off. And there's a little bit of weirdness here and there, but I think it's significantly better than almost any other Nike sneaker that we've cut apart and I love them. There's like, oh, there's so much to it. And this video is probably already super long, and so me and uh, Colin are probably gonna sit down and go through this whole sneaker over again and just really go through all the details, why we like it. He knows a lot more about the history. I have a lot of experience with these on feet, and so it's gonna be really fun. It's probably gonna be on the Rose Anvil 2 channel, so go subscribe to that. Go check out these sneakers via link in my description, and thank you guys for watching, and 
yeah, finally, I found a, a, a Nike sneaker I love. This is, this is probably my favorite sneaker. So thank you guys. See ya.